So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our next uh, session, an interview and Q&A session. So, I already encourage you to go into Slido again and prepare uh, questions and ask them. Uh, my name is Stefan Wagner. Uh, we have a session now that looks on the upstream side of the supply chain with a European focus. Uh, the title of the session, Raw Material Scarcity, a Major Threat to the European Battery Industry? Question mark. This is what I would like to explore a little bit with my two uh, guests here today. Uh, first, we have uh, Dr. Anna uh, Motta here. She is head of Advanced Materials and Technologies at the Talga Group, uh, representing the graphite industry, if you will. And then uh, Dr. Christoph Hartnick, he's director R&D and business development, uh, lithium battery materials at AMG Lithium, representing lithium. Uh, before we start and before you can address your questions, I would like to ask you, and starting with Anna, uh, to give us a short uh, uh, insight into what uh, uh, Tiger Group does, what you do, uh, where you're active, in particular with a focus on Europe. So, Anna. Thank you very much. Um, um, it's a great pleasure to be here to talk about graphite today. Um, we've been hearing many talks about resourcing the batteries that everyone is, is making and planning to make in Europe and, and how that um, how those minerals that are required are largely coming out of Asia at the moment. Graphite is, is no, uh, no different. Actually, I think for the case of graphite, it's probably worse than most of the other minerals because um, more than 90% of the advanced processing of graphite is done in China. The rest um, is largely done in other Asian countries, but the the starting material for graphite that goes into batteries, uh, which is either synthetic graphite or natural graphite, gets ferronized, shaped first, made into a beautiful round or potato shape. Uh, that is almost solely done in China currently. So what Talga is doing, uh, we are, our operations are fully European-based. We have a <clears throat> very large graphite deposit that was identified in Sweden, in the very, very north of Sweden. Um, the current uh, exploration has shown about 35 million tons of graphite. It's a high-grade deposit, so the mining area that we need to look at is quite, the footprint is very small. So what we do is we extract the graphite, we purify it, we process it, we turn it into anode material that is ready to go into your anode slurry. So we are, we are a vertically integrated advanced materials company starting from mine and uh, finishing with a battery material. So uh, our anode line, we have a, a Europe's first natural graphite processing line that is running in Sweden at the moment. Uh, we have started building our full-scale anode production line also in Sweden. And, uh, and we are looking at starting our mining operations shortly. Uh, so we are, we are, in addition to this, noticing the interest in silicon. So in Germany, we are producing a silicon carbon composite material as well, trying to be a one-stop shop in Europe for fully European sourced and old materials. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Anna. Christoph, same question for you. Great, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the introduction. Thanks for the organizers for having us here. Thanks for raising this topic. Thanks for Tina to have this briefing on, even on Saturday, since I'm a pretty short-term um, replacement for my colleague. Um, and I would like to start with a pretty pretty bold question. We We see this raw material supply issues and we see the dependence of Europe on foreign sources for raw materials. This is a huge challenge, but the good news starts here. There are ways out there, opportunities. We have to do it together in Europe, and we have to do it now. <clears throat> we see things are moving. We see that the European Commission had, for example, this critical raw materials act in a, what we see as a European perspective in record time established. Um, <clears throat> risk mitigation, supply security, yeah, and, and basically everything around getting the materials is now central, focusing, is core to what we are doing. Um, and here it starts when we look at the targets, which are pretty ambitious. The European Union starts um, targets for 12 million EVs produced in 2030. That means 
we have to happen, supply chain established, latest by then, this is a real challenge. And if I come right now to lithium, and this is where we are active in, this is basically my home turf. We don't have mines, we don't have converters, and we don't have refineries in Europe. We have to build up our supply chain latest by, by 2030. And here it comes to AMG Lithium, since we are leading this way. AMG Lithium is headquartered in Frankfurt. Um, we have there our R&D lab, and here it's a picture where I'm pretty proud of. Um, this is the first European lithium hydroxide refinery. It has a nameplate capacity of 20,000 tons. Um, <clears throat> this is the first out of five modules. So basically over the next year we are planning to upgrade this refinery by numbering up, starting with the first module, 20,000 tons, and then adding four more modules with a total capacity of around about 100,000 tons. The modular setup is targeting for a flexible um, fle or flexibility in terms of feedstock. And I will come to that point later again. And these 100,000 tons have to be put into a perspective. If we look at these 12 million EVs that have to be produced by 2030, that means 500,000 tons. So every fifth or one out of five EVs will be operated by lithium produced by AMG Lithium. We are pretty proud of that, um, and we are basically trying to establish this supply chain by allowing for several sources, meaning hard rock, meaning brine, lithium, and, and recycling. Recycling will play an important role. We at AMG Lithium try to cover, especially when it comes to the view on Europe, recycling feedstocks to integrate and reintegrate them to the battery industry. This is where we are. And now we can start. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you already showed or explained that not everything is still in the planning phase, that things are already being implemented or are implemented. Uh, going forward, where do you see the main challenges Europe faces uh, when it comes to the battery industry in trying to build up a European supply chain to localize the supply chain. So what are the main challenges? Maybe, Anna. Yeah, I think one of the uh, main challenges is, of course, that um, the batteries that are being manufactured today and in the next few years um, need to be resourced from existing operational full-scale battery materials manufacturers. So, uh, but, and at the same time, the, um, the qualification for, for new uh, su uh, suppliers and building of those facilities to be able to supply the materials need to commence. So there's a lot of uh, parallel manufacturing capability that needs to be built and, uh, and, and needs to be tested, needs to be qualified. So I think that the timelines that we are working against are very hard. To bring an, um, a graphite mine live takes about 10 years from, uh, from the first uh, exploration of the material. So we are in this business now for the 11th year. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, are yeah. getting, we are very, very That's near. That's why you're already we, active. When, yes, yeah. so we, uh, we, we are processing trial mined material, but full-scale mining is hopefully soon to commence, um, but that's not, that's not the end of it. You, you then need to build that know-how of processing, of, of, of uh, turning that natural material into a battery-grade product. Mm -hmm. So it, it, is a, it is a long process, and in, on top of that, the qualification at the battery mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing. So okay. timelines are challenging. So what I take, there are a number of interdependencies, uh, many things that need it, to be done in, in parallel. parallel. It has parallel. to be parallel, yeah. Okay. yeah. Christoph, from your perspective, what are the main, major main challenges <laughs> localizing uh, uh, supply chain for lithium in this case? The, the lithium supply chain, I mean, we, we see the typical raw material sources, as mentioned, it's hard rock or it's brine. Brine located in South America, hard rock, Australia, also in China. Um, and before we have this hard rock, which is certainly the feedstock with the most promising expansion capacities, there has to be conversion, there has to be refineries, there have to be yeah, chemical modifications. And what we see, we have the hard rock, a mad black magic box, and we have the lithium hydroxide as a battery material. And this black magic box has to be transferred to Europe. Currently, it's mostly located, the conversion capacities are mostly located in China. We see a kind of blueprint to the photovoltaic industry, 
production capacities localized, centralized in China creates a huge dependency. If we see the target of the European Commission to have only 65% from one country, currently we are way above that. So bringing these conversion um, capacities to Europe together is the most and most critical challenge at the moment. Okay, it has already been uh, mentioned a couple of times in this morning, also the Critical Raw Materials Act uh, of the EU, which is uh, 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 provisionally agreed upon. What, how will this impact uh, maybe the speed or the, uh, the ability to localize uh, the supply chain? Um, so that's a, a step in a really good direction, of course, uh, looking at ways in which we can enable um, more safe uh, delivery of raw materials because when you are very much focused in one area, one geographic area, th that puts your operation at high risk. Um, so uh, we still wait to see how it really concretely turns into action. Um, uh, we at the moment are looking at natural graphite, which is our business, being uh, uh, starting to face some export restrictions from China. Uh, th this is um, a very clear sign that, that security needs to be taken seriously, needs to be taken very, very uh, carefully. But I think that, that um, there has to be cooperation with different parts of the world to have the right amount of material coming, coming into Europe. So when it comes to graphite, uh, there are, there are uh, graphite resources, uh, not only ours, but there are a few others, but it is not sufficient for the, for the aspirations of Europe. Uh, synthetic graphite is starting to be manufactured in Europe, some, some incoming Asian companies, but also some European companies. And so all of this, all of this is going to have to be boosted in order to meet those critical mm -hmm. raw, uh, raw materials uh, okay. challenges. Uh -huh. Thank you. Christoph, uh, related questions, I take up one of the questions from the audience, very much related to this. Do you believe the Critical Materials Act together with the new battery regulation will be able and enough to retain critical materials in Europe? What are the challenges? So will this enable, and this is, en is this, this enough? That's a um, let, let, let me split this <laughs> question <laughs> and the answer um, in two parts. Will this enable? Yes, if, in my opinion, if you provide the grants and if you bring that to this no friends, no grants, so forming um, consortia, forming joint ventures, forming joint activities, so forcing parties to act together, this will certainly enable. Will it be enough? We have to put the, the money on the table. What we see, mm -hmm. especially in, in Africa, is there are Asian players <clears throat> who put the money on the table, who buy the mines, who buy the ores. Um, we have to counteract, taking into account our ESG criteria, um, but we have to be faster, we have to bring ourselves in a position to act dynamically and move together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I take, it's uh, a very good step in a good direction, but it's not enough additional money in the end is what needed. Also a question related to money uh, with regards to graphite. Uh, have you seen any increase in investment after the Chinese export restrictions? Those in restrictions Europe. come into play on the 1st of December, so as this is fairly recent news. Um, so definitely a lo lot of interest, a lot of interest. Uh, the interest has been picking up slowly. Uh, graphite, well, even though it's 40% of volume of a battery, uh, it's only 10% of the price. So it's, it's not been at, on the radar in the same way lithium has been or some of the cathode materials have been. Um, but I think that the, the awareness or the scarcity of the material has been increasing steadily. So, um, but of course, this kind of announcement does, does mean that there is a lot more interest in people just, just, being make, just making sure that they have access to the material. Yeah. Okay, just one follow-up question, also graphite, uh, sorry, Christoph. Uh, graphite is said to be a, a dirty industry uh, in terms of environmental impact. Is that true? Uh, how are you tracking uh, if at Talga, uh, how you, are you tracking it at Talga in Sweden? I, I would start by saying absolutely. So if you, uh, there was a recent uh, OEM report, sustainability report that said that the graphite anode produces more than 30% of the um, CO2 
footprint of the battery. So absolutely, we have to say that, yep, that's in incredibly important. So if we really want to build a sustainable uh, industry, we have to look at that. Um, we operate in Sweden. We operate fully with hydropower. Our carbon footprint is uh, more than order of magnitude less than the best uh, Asian counterpart mm -hmm. so uh, so it is very much in our in our Points. radar yeah. in our uh, so, and and we can say that there is an option available now for much reduced carbon footprint mm -hmm. in Europe uh, so so we can we no longer can say that we just rely on the on the synthetic yeah. Coming or out. you have more impact because yeah. it's un yeah. more under your control. Yep. Also mining, you already said you are mining lithium. There's a question concerning mining also. Lithium mines exist in Europe, but starting a new mine is politically very difficult. Will the EU regulators support their development uh, in the name of resource independence? So <coughs> jump over you know, uh, the, sh the own shadow, as we would say. There, there, is <coughs> there are changes necessary, definitely, yes. We, we see lithium mines, we see Sinwald uh, to the Czech border in, in Germany, we see mines, we see resources uh, in Portugal. Um, these are certainly interesting mines to start with. They will not ensure 100% independence. What we have to make sure is that we take into account recycling, that we start recycling activities already coming from scrap material, uh, from the battery production nowadays, so to be ready if larger volumes arise um, and, and make sure that once the lithium is here in Europe, we, we keep it and we don't have to export spent batteries. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there might be some mining of lithium in Europe. Yes, mining and forward. recycling as the two yeah. pillars and the two feedstocks for future lithium supply. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Going to graphite again. Uh, do you believe that European and North American natural graphite can pose a more sustainable, secure, and ESG-friendly premium product? Will this justify a price premium of Chinese uh, graphite? The answer simply is that yes, there is, uh, there is already um, uh, a strong body of evidence that yes, we can have a much improved product in terms of the ESG. Um, how do, how do we value that? Um, so that that is still something that is interesting to see how the how the market moves. But uh, but while the while the Asian supply is very inexpensive, that's of course a driver for for lower battery costs as a whole. But um, but there are better alternatives for the environment out there, and it should definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, come with a premium. Okay, same question could be yeah. asked for lithium, right? <clears throat> Is there a price premium for foreign products? Don't think so. We, what, what we see here is having, having lithium um, or not, not being forced to transport lithium on a, on a larger distance certainly gives the country an advantage for local, local lithium. And if you, if you take into account what you have to transport, if you for example, transport ore or hard rock compared to um, refined uh, material, then you s clearly see 2% versus 20% lithium content. And this is already a focus on premium products. Okay. Okay. But I think so, that so the, the price premium has to come from the fact that you, you do need different methods to, to produce the material. It's not just because you want there to be, it is because the cost is is higher as mm -hmm. well to produce. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so we're all already coming to an end to some Q&A and, and questions that you asked. Uh, we talked about uh, price competitiveness, the ability to localize uh, support through the uh, critical uh, uh, European uh, Critical Raw Materials uh, Act. Concluding statement, uh, what do you see going forward uh, the next years? What are the important steps to do now? In our pre-discussion, you also talked about capabilities. Maybe you, Anna, you oh, can yes. uh, refer um, to this as well. 
Absolutely. So I think that it's it's really essential that we work together as the, as an, as a, the whole value chain, um, because because none of us can do this do this alone. We cannot get the security alone. We cannot get the pro the production capability alone, and we cannot get the skills alone. Because that's something that that. It's a, it's a new industry for us all. We, are, we have been developing our own processes, our own purifications, all of that. But, but in order to, to really get the industry up and running, we, it, it is a massive effort in collaboration, massive effort, effort, effort in training people, massive effort, effort in getting the entire value chain working together. So I think that's the key message here. Mm -hmm. It has to be a, a, a joint activity. Okay, yeah. Christoph, your Sim last... Uh... Sim similar, from, uh, similar from my side, there are challenges, there are huge ambitions, there are way out, there are opportunities, um, ambitions are good, actions are better, and if we do that together, we will be successful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you very much, Anna and Christoph. Let's give them an applause for their insights and comments. We got, I think, a little bit of better understanding of the upstream side of the supply chain, raw material, and what's the current state in Europe, what could be done. Thank you very much again. Thank you.